All right, y'all ready? Let's turn to Proverbs 16, verse 1. Proverbs 16, verse 1. It'll be up on the screen. Let's see how fast I can get through this. I just spoke for 10 minutes, so let me see. Let's go, Michael. In the NLT version, it says this. We can make our own what? We can make our own what? Plans. But the Lord gives the right answer. I'm going to back that thing up because here I will exegete some thoughts around the meaning of this text. We can make our own what? Plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. So some of us came today planning on what we were going to give, but the Lord is going to make the right answer. See, anytime you do this type of giving, you can't just do it based on your own premonition. You have to go and ask God, God, what would you have me to do today? See, because sometimes what's standing in between your next blessing and your next level is your ability to believe and trust God. And every now and then, you will have to take the money test. Everybody say the money test. You, you, we will have to take the test that will challenge some things that you have believed, some things that you have trusted, and it will cause you to recognize if you really trust God or not. It's not because of a preacher. It's not because of a church. It's because God has positioned you at a moment of time to say, are you going to trust uh, your provision or are you going to trust your provider? We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. I promise you I'm going to unpack that today. Verse 2, people may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Watch this. Num verse 3, commit your actions to who? Commit your actions to who? I can't hear you. Commit your actions to who? The Lord. And your plans will succeed. So, Sharice, before you get up here and worship God, you got to commit your actions to the Lord. Y'all all right? But before I do anything, I say, got to say, God, uh, I'm not just doing this because I want to, but I'm committing these actions to you. I, I want you to bless this. I want your results, and I'm doing this because I truly believe this is what you want me to do. Is there anybody here that recognizes that you cannot be successful alone just in your own gifts and abilities, but you need the anointing of God on your life. You need the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost to flow through you. Maybe you at work, you still need the Holy Ghost. Yeah, maybe you just answering the phone, but you still need the Holy Ghost on your life to be able to talk the right talk. Uh, oh Lord commit your actions to the Lord I believe Eugene this is something we don't do enough you mean I believe this is something we don't do enough when we wake up in the morning we should be praying God order my steps today lead my path today God show me what to do show me where to go show me who to talk to I'm committing my actions to you Y'all all right? Verse 4 says, The Lord has made what? Everything for his own what? Even the wicked for a day of disaster. Woo! Somebody say, wow. Let's go to Proverbs 16 and 9. I got to get through this scripture so I can unpack this. Proverbs 16 and 9 says this. Watch this, y'all. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our what? I can plan it out. For those that don't know, I, I do strategic planning for businesses because I was able to learn through other coaches how to strategically plan for my own businesses. And so because God has given me the gift of administration and I've developed the skill to administrate I know how to put a strategy together. Everybody say strategy. I know how to put a strategy, a plan together, but it's essential for me to understand even though I put this strategy together, it is God that causes each step 
along the way to come to fruition. Somebody say it's God. See, when you commit your actions to God, you can have a plan. Matter of fact, he wants you to have a plan. But you have to recognize this. Along your journey, God oftentimes shows us the end. He says, I, I want you to go from point A to point B. And so I'm, I'm developing a plan or a strategy on how I can go from point A to point B. And I preached this once before. But in life, every time I take a step, I know sometimes there's opposition. Sometimes there are things that come to interfere in my path of my travel. And every now and then, right in the middle of my journey, God would say, take a right. And I had to go right and I had to respond to God. And then, you know, in life, it's just like life. Something happens that cause me to, to shift back and forth. And sometimes there's uncertainty. And God is saying, all right, son, now take a left. So though I make my plans, every step in my life should be ordered of the Lord. Y'all all right? I'll unpack that so you can understand it. All right, now stay with me. Proverbs 19, 21. All right, I'm, I'm laying the foundation. All right, y'all all right? Proverbs 19, 21 says, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So, watch this, Yamina. When you made your plan and your strategy, you can't be upset when, when it doesn't look identical. Let me, let me, let me help somebody. Let me... Where are all the single ladies? All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Where are all the single ladies? All right. Let, let, me, let me help you for a second. You said, Pastor Mike, I'm waiting on the Lord to send me my, my boo. My boo ass. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, see, this is the thing. During childhood, many young girls are given imagery somebody say imagery of what their life should look like one day uh -huh. and even though you can acquire and try to adopt those images to your life and your plan and your strategy y'all stay with me all my single ladies you think it has to look like this but we're all my seasoned saints. You know that even though in life you had a picture of how it should look, it just never turns out exactly the way you imagine. It, it never turns out identical. It may have some resemblance, but it's never identical. So you can create your plan. Yeah, when I, I'm going to make sure I, he, he fulfills everything on my checklist. Tall, dark, handsome. Got some muscles, you know. If you like them fluffy, you say you got a little belly, you know, just to keep me warm. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm slipping. Um, you go down your list. Yes, he got a good job. He got some money, right? Yeah, he got a retirement account. He got an IRA. Uh huh. Uh. But guess what? God can bring the right person into your life. Don't have none of that. And then guess what happened? Love takes over. I miss so much love, Pastor Mike. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all not praying for me. And so what happens is you had a plan. You had a strategy. But God ordered your steps. But it doesn't look identical to your plan. Watch this. And you have to be okay with that. Is that all right? Say, I must be okay with God's results. All right. Proverbs 20 and 4. I'm taking too long. Proverbs 20 and 4 says this. Watch this, y'all. Those too what? Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food 
at the harvest. I'm going to read that one more time because this is the second text which I will unpack and summarize as I close. Proverbs 20 and 4 says, those too what? Too lazy to do what? To plow in what? The right season. Will have no food at the harvest. Let me, let me unpack this real quick and then I'll move on. Y'all all right? I need, I need nine and a half minutes. Nine and a half minutes. Those too lazy to plow. Let me, let me unpack that for a second. You have to write it down because I didn't do a slide for this. Those too lazy to plow. This is an indication that this individual doesn't have vision. Because vision will cause you to get up even when you don't feel like it. I I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. Yeah, th this is a person that, that, that does not know that they have a purpose for their life. Because when you don't have a sense of purpose, it's hard to get up in the morning. Hello? It's easy. Watch this. To allow spirits of depression to overtake you when you don't have a sense of vision and purpose. Watch this. So number one, we've identified that the author identified this person as lazy. Y'all with me? That means a person without vision and what? Purpose, a sense of purpose. Or they're not aware. Watch this. To plow. Everybody say to plow. That means there's some work involved. The person that's too lazy to plow. Somebody say, CJ, the work that's involved. I, I know that you want everything for free. And I know that some of my millennials feel entitled that somebody owe you something. But baby, let me help you understand. God said that every man got to work. That's been since Adam. That's been thousands of years. You can't just expect just because you got a few followers one day that all of a sudden money just going to come in. No, baby, you got to work. Look at your neighbor telling you got to work. Uh-huh. So it says, watch this. Let's go back to the text. Those too lazy to plow. They don't have vision. They don't have a sense of purpose. They don't want to work. Those too lazy to plow. Watch this, y'all. In the right season. Everybody say the right season. See, I love that the author says this, Cindy. He says the right season. Stay with me, Asia. Because in life, you can find yourself trying to harvest in the wrong season. What do you mean by that, Pastor Mike? In life, you can get to the place where you expect God to do something or to bless you or you expect things to happen in a certain season at a certain time when it may not be the right season. Um, let, let me see if I can help you. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, this is an avocado. I just picked this out of my neighbor's yard this morning. And uh, this came off one of his trees. It looked kind of rough and everything, but this was the tree that had some disease and some damage. But what I, what I came to understand, Eugene, he had two different trees. And he said, Mike, you can go pick out some avocados whenever you want. But the, the tree in the front, which grew to be the largest, matter of fact, is probably about 16 foot tall now. And he just planted it two or three years ago. And it was no more than probably, I don't know, 18 inches, but it's a big tree now. And it produces hundreds of avocados. But he has a second tree, which I picked this one from. He said, and, and this one's so hard. He said, he said, uh, I, the one tree you can pick, I forget what month, so just act like the month's correct, because I forgot. He said you can pick like in August or September. But he said the second tree, you gotta pick in like November. This so good, but y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. 
Can I help you? Can I help you? See, Shayla, you listening to me? Listen, this is what happens. The common person will look at both trees and think they're identical. And he said, you got to know, Michael, I'm telling you that you have to pick of the this tree at a certain time because you may pick it too early. And that's what I've discovered in our lives. Those of us that are very um, aggressive, very proactive, um, we, we often move so fast that we just want to get, get right now when God may say, wait, Anybody ever been in a position in your life you, you really was trying so hard to make something happen and it seemed like it just wasn't? It's because you, you're trying to pick in the wrong season. Because if it's for you, God's going to cause it to happen for you. All you got to do is live right. Oh, this so good. This so good. So that text we had, put it back on the screen. The lazy person, person with no vision, no purpose, don't want to plow, don't want to work. But they got to understand you got to pick in the right season. That means I have to have insight. <laughs> nah, y'all didn't get it. Somebody say insight. I must be able to recognize the harvest. That's the ability to see God's provision. Uh-huh. But let me let me show you something else. And I, and I, I think I may be getting it into my first clothes because I'm already out of time. Oh, uh, let me show you something. Y'all see this seed? This is an avocado seed. So this was one of the seeds. We got so many avocados in my neighbor yard that they some kind of ways find feet and walk to my yard. But uh, I don't know if it's animals or what. But Eugene, let me show you something. So this is the seed that normally is in the fruit. But what happens is if no one comes and pick the fruit, eventually this drops to the ground. It's revelation in that, and y'all didn't even get it. Uh, but what happens is, over a period of time, the flesh will decay, and the seed is left. Y'all all right? Now, this is the order of God. And we, we will come to understand, and baby, this is why I was researching this. You asked me all them questions. Uh, I love my wife. Uh, like, why, why, you, why you reading about that? Like, baby, I got to research. Okay. So, most fruit have a seed in it. So, all that, them seedless grapes you eat, them seedless water, watermelons, that's not natural. Most of the time, it's man-made. Okay. But every now and then, it can happen. But anyway, I digress. I picked up the seed off the ground, and God intended it to be this way. What you mean, Pastor Mike? intended from some seeds to fall to the ground. Why? So it can continue to reproduce. But see, what we what we do, you mean we go try to pluck the whole tree. Watch this. We eat the avocado. Yeah, I'm going to have me some guacamole. Yeah, I'm going to have me some avocado and toast this morning with some sesame seed on. Y'all y'all do all that. And then you throw the seed away. Y'all all right? You tracking, Lisa? You tracking with me online? That's what we do in life. We want to take the entire harvest, consume the harvest, and throw away the seed. Somebody ought to got a revelation by now. I know that's not correct English. But God desire 
for the seed to go back in the ground. That's why he put the seed in the fruit in the first place. See, what happens is if you have fruit that doesn't have seed, you're going to consume it and you can't reproduce it. But God designed us in our environment and everything around us in a way that it will have the ability to reproduce. Stay with me. But this is what happens. Johnny, this is what happens. We forget that God blesses us with a harvest and we shouldn't consume all of it. Y'all, y'all. I uh, need somebody to get this. You know, when you're poor, when you're poor, everybody say poor, like you're from Pensacola. When you're poor, I, I've been there. I, I know what it's like to have to, you know, use the EBT card. Y'all still do that? I don't know. Uh, I know what it's like. And, uh, Wick, who was on? Y'all know about Wick? I know what it's like to be on Wick. My wife don't know, but I know. About, about Wick? Anybody know about Wick? Yeah, man. That government support. How, how many of you from the 80s remember that block cheese? Y'all, you know <laughs> And they don't, that peanut butter, it gets stuck to the roof of your mouth and won't move. <laughs> okay. Because I know y'all see me, y'all think I, you know, I've been doing well all my life. No, baby. I know what it is to, to get kicked out. I know what it is to come outside and you think somebody stole your car. <laughs> and and you, you ready to call the police. Somebody came and got my car. No, baby, them people came and picked it up because you won't pay them their money. I've been there, been there, I know about it. But watch this, watch this, break it down, man. What, what happens is if you're ever introduced into poverty, you have to be careful that that environment does not become your mindset. Y'all, y'all quiet. You, you, you quiet. Somebody need, need to be recording this. You, you have to be careful, Eugene, that, that even though you're placed in that environment, that that environment does not become a part of you. Y'all know the old saying, uh, Melissa, you may never heard this before. But you, you can take the person out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. You can take them out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of them. You ought to tell the, the devil you a lie. I may grow up like this. I may was raised in the hood and the ghetto, but it's not inside of me. I... It can become a mindset. Watch this. So you you so accustomed to barely having enough, watch this y'all, that you, you hold on to everything because you're afraid to lose it. This so good. See, see being around poverty will cause you to feel like you don't want to lose your lands because it's something called survival mode. But what happens is if it becomes a part of your mindset, it will control the rest of your life. And so God did something with the Israelites so profound. He says, I'm going to give you manna. I'm going to give you daily bread. So you won't. Watch this, y'all. Such revelatory information. God gave the children of Israel manna for their own awareness for their own salvation and they didn't know it. Let me help you. Um, let me help you. I'm trying to finish. Y'all all right? I promise I'm closing. Uh, but you got to get this. God gave the children of Israel manna because he didn't want them to get stuck with a certain mindset. Because he knew he was taking them into a promised land and he didn't want them to get into the promised land with a desert mentality. He didn't want to take them to the promised land and, and they're stuck in the wilderness thought process. And so what he did, Eugene, he gave them daily bread. He gave them just enough so they wouldn't get accustomed to trying to hold on to it. Because for those that don't know, manna was spoiled overnight. 
and they had to get rid of it. See, I believe this, mama, that there's some things in our lives that God will say, baby, you got to get rid of this. Let me show you how he does it. Man, it's so good. It's so good. Listen to me, y'all. Have you ever been in a place and you're asking God for more and then all of a sudden maybe it's on your job. You start getting frustrated. Or maybe it's with people you start getting frustrated. Because God says since you don't want to make the decision, I'll make it for you because I love you so much. I'm going to cause that situation to spoil Or maybe it's that card you don't want to let go. <laughs> oh, Lord. Or, or, or maybe it's something in your house you don't want to let go. And God will allow it to cause you so much trouble that you finally release. God said, I was trying to get you to let it go a long time ago, but you weren't listening. Oh, Lord. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm almost done. And so watch this, Eugene. Verlaine, you got to get this, is that God is trying to teach you how to continue to prosper by not getting stuck in a poverty mindset that you learn how to let things go instead of holding on to it. Are y'all with me? Don't get stuck being that person that doesn't have vision and purpose because you won't have a desire to get up in the morning you won't have a desire to continue to to do things for God mama Sandra come here real quick I know you right notes hurry up hurry up come on mama Sandra hurry up come on come on there she goes y'all see she moving yeah now you got your running shoes on today listen come here face face the camera I love this lady so much. I know it's a divine appointment that God brought her to the kingdom church. Yeah. And uh, y'all may not know because you can't tell by looking at her, but she's 78 years old. And, uh, you know, that's a blessing. Come on, y'all clap it up. Yeah. So she, she right around the corner from 80. Listen, that's a blessing, right? But she know because, watch this, y'all. But because of vision and purpose, she's not lazy. She's she not lazy, y'all. And, and see, that's how you can reach this age and still know that God has work for you to do. Somebody say vision. Say purpose. Yeah. It says, you still got to plow. Let me help you, Mama Sandra. Let me help you. Y'all all right? Uh-huh. I'm in my clothes. So what happens is, even when you get to a certain age, you say, you know what? I can't do what I used to do. Well, all my older saints, my season saints, you say, yeah, Pastor Mike, you right. I already know because I forget stuff I just saw and thought about and talked about yesterday. And I'm like, Lord, Jesus. And, uh, but this is what I learned. That don't stop you from plowing. Amen. This is what you do. You just find somebody else to delegate the plowing to. But you still plowing. But I have a business. Y'all, y'all missed. You, you, that just went over your head. I'm not the plower, but I have a business of plowers. Amen. Woo, this so good. This so good. And, and so that's what I'll tell uh, all my seasoned saints. You don't have to go and get up six o'clock in the morning and work to seven, eight o'clock at night. You just find somebody else to help you do it. Because you have the knowledge and the wisdom. You have the vision and the purpose. I, I wish I can help somebody. Watch this. And God will give you the ability to recognize when it's the right season, when it's the right harvest. Because these young people, they can't tell, they can't see it. But because of your experience, because of what you've gone through, you know, baby, uh-uh, that's not it. I've been here before. I've been through this situation before. No, that's not it. It's not time yet because I've been here already. I wish I could preach to somebody. Y'all clap it up for Mama Sandra. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. 
I'm wrapping up with this. So, my desire for Kissimmee Campus location is that our next location is what I would call a family life center. Y'all all right? I'm going to say it again. Come on, I, I got to be done because we got to get out of here. My desire for whatever building God moves us to is set up like a family life center. Okay, because I've been preaching all month and all last month that I believe that God wants us to fulfill the vision of TKC through our mission through faith-based programs. Somebody say faith-based programs. And so it'll be a place that we can provide family and marital counseling and coaching. Come on, clap it up for that. Mama Sandra, I should have left you up here. Matter of fact, come back. It'll be a place that, come back, Mama Sandra. It'll be a place that we can uh, do children mentorship. Y'all clap it up. How many know our children need to be mentored? We'll be able to expand our sports league that was started at our West Campus down into Osceola uh, County. Come on, how many want to see that? Uh, but then here's the part. Uh, Max, I need you to put the, the the picture up on the screen. Go to the images slideshow. I, I want you to put. Y'all see that? Come in, come in. Y'all see that? Now this lady, 78 years old. See, this is what vision and purpose will do to you. It'll say, as long as there's breath in my body, I will serve the Lord. I wish I could preach. Woo! Yeah! Mm. Y'all see that certificate? So, Lisa, which is Mama Sandra's daughter, they went and they got certified so they can help families that's dealing with mental illness. This is part of the vision of the house, y'all. That TKC, Kissimmee, we're going to make an impact on those that have been struggling with any type of mental illness. And I want that to occur so they can have office space in the Family Life Center so folks can come and get what they need. Watch this, not only in the natural, but also in the spirit. Somebody say amen. And so there's another program. I can't get into all of them. Because for some of you, this is just too much, and you don't want to, you can't handle all this because your faith not there yet, but mine is. So I just say, keep on hanging out. You're going to see what God's going to do. Now, now, the other thing that I know that her and her daughter wanted to do because they experienced it, they wanted to be somewhat of a mediator for those that I are in situations of co-parenting. You know, it's not always easy when parents split up or have issues, but what happens is it always impacts the child. It always, no matter what, it could be smooth, but never underestimate it will have an impact on the child. I know my three boys, they were impacted, no doubt in my mind. Listen, but some people just can't get along. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, they won't get along. They will not communicate. They will not talk. Maybe there's some anger. There's some animosity. But still, there's time sharing. Everybody say time sharing. So we want to be able to provide a place. Matter of fact, you know how I know this is the will of God? Because it's happened to me. My son comes and meet his son here at church because him and the mama don't get along. I don't mind sharing that. That lets me know, Michael, this part of the plan. Somebody say vision and purpose. God will use anything you have gone through to help somebody else. Don't let your hardships and your problems. 
Stop burying your seed. Stop throwing your seed away. We're going to put this seed back in the ground, y'all. Hello? And because I, I saw that, I was like, and they brought this to me months ago. Because they were going through it in their family. We need a place where the children can come. It's an environment that's conducive for them to play. And they can spend time with either parent. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And we found out that there's only one organization in the whole state that provides this service. And they don't do things always the right way. They don't always have the best interests of especially black and brown folks. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And when God began to deal with, with me with this, see, stop thinking that church is just inside the four walls. We have a greater impact outside of these walls than inside these walls. There are more people outside of these walls than inside these walls. And I believe God desires to use each and every person that's under the sound of my voice to make an impact in our community. Are you here with me today? And if your mind is made up to make an impact in this community, you ought to stand on your feet and lift up your hands and say, God, I want you to use me to make an impact. Yeah, come on. God, use me to make an impact. I know my life has a purpose. I know you're giving me vision. Yeah, use me, God. Come on, shout it out. Use me, God. Use me. Use me, God. Use me. Come on, talk to him right now. Come on, take the next 30 seconds just to talk to God. God, use me. God, use me. God, use me. Yeah.